Hello everyone, Charlie here with High on Diabetes. I am here doing part three of a four part series where I'm interviewing every diabetic member of my family. Uh, for this month of November, we are spreading awareness about diabetes. I thought this would be a fun way to do that. Um, so today I'm interviewing myself. Hey. Well, uh, me, <laughs> why don't you tell everyone listening how we came to be diabetic. Right, so I became diabetic 10 years ago. I was 21 and serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I knew the signs when they started. I was going to the bathroom a lot. I was still thirsty. I was drinking straight out of the milk jug. I bought myself uh, an apple juice and I drink straight out of the apple juice container, things that I didn't normally do. I was pretty emotional. My poor companion had to put up with me um, and I was very tired. I'd lost about 10 or 15 pounds in like a two week period. So I knew something was up, uh, but I was putting it off because I, because of my siblings and growing up with them, I knew what was happening. Uh, but I did call the mission president's wife, told her what I thought was going on. That I was pretty sure I was diabetic and she set me up with an appointment to see a doctor there. And sure enough, my A1C came back at 13.6. So I, I had the option to stay in the mission and try and figure it out and continue to be a missionary, which is what I wanted to do at first. Um, and I tried to do that for three days, I think. Um, but I just wasn't feeling great and it made it hard to, to serve in the way that I wanted to. So about a week into uh, the six week period, which is a transfer, about a week into that, I decided to go home. And as soon as I got home, my mom got me the insulin I needed. I ate the biggest meal I'd had in about a week's time. And I felt great. And in the next five weeks, I got an insulin pump. I learned a whole bunch about counting carbs and all this stuff that I'd never really worried about for myself before and I got back to the mission field um, just five weeks later. So a lot of miracles, big blessings, and I'm so glad that I was able to go back and finish that and just prove to myself that even though I was diabetic, I could still do all the same things that I'd done before and being able to serve my mission and in a lot of ways being an even better missionary was just a proof to me that my life was different in how I lived it, but that I wasn't a worse or I wasn't worse in any way because I now had a disease, like I wasn't handicapped or anything like that. I could still do all the same things I loved doing and some things I'm even better at because of this diagnosis. So having my family there to help me definitely was um, a huge a huge blessing. Yes, being the last in the family to become diabetic, we certainly are lucky to have so many awesome examples. Well, since we're here spreading awareness about this disease, what is it that you want the world to know? Well, that's a good question. For people who are not diabetic, I guess I would want them to know that I live a very happy life. Yes, diabetes is a disease and it's a hard one to manage at times, but I, upon finding this out about me, I wouldn't want someone to automatically assume that I live this awful life. <laughs> I have all my toes, I have all my limbs, and I plan on keeping them. <laughs> I am not in danger of losing anything or losing my eyesight right now or any of those awful things that people may hear about diabetes. I eat all the foods that I enjoy eating. There isn't anything that I can't eat actually. And my favorite things to eat are cheesecake and dark chocolate, which you would think those things in diabetes just don't mix, but they do and they can. Um, I think that's what I would like people to know that managing uh, diabetes and doing what your pancreas does on its own is not easy. 
but it is possible and there's actually a lot of technology now that helps me to do that. All right, now for our last question. If another diabetic were to ask you for a tip on how to manage diabetes or the best thing you do to manage it yourself, what would you say? Well, if someone asked me for a tip, I would say knowledge is power. Um, knowing your blood sugar is the only way you can help yourself. It really feels gross to be high and you can't do anything when your blood sugar is low and it's actually very dangerous. So knowing what your blood sugar is will allow you to keep yourself in that sweet spot, that nice range where you wanna be so that you can live the life you wanna live. So I'd say test your blood sugar as often as you can. If you have uh, the ability to get a continuous glucose monitor, do that. I have a Dexcom G6 and I love it. I know all the time what my blood sugar is. I know if it's rising, I know if it's lowering. And this knowledge gives me power to live my life and to do all the things that I want to be able to do. And without that, uh, you're really lost. Uh, you're really just guessing. It's kind of like uh, driving a car without the gas gauge working. You can get in your car and hope to get to your destination, but you don't know if you have enough gas to get there. And without knowing your blood sugar, you can't, you can't know anything about what's going to happen or what is happening currently. Um, and that living that kind of guessing game is, is not fun. So my biggest tip would be know what's going on uh, so that you can better take care of yourself. Well, that wraps it up for today, but stay tuned because next week I'm going to be interviewing my brother who is also a type 1 diabetic. And if you are helping somebody who is diabetic or you are diabetic yourself and you want to know more, you can visit my blog, highondiabetes.com. I've also been putting a fact about diabetes on my face. Facebook and Instagram page every day in the month of November, so you can check that out if you want to know more. Thanks! Bye!